Hello, my sweet shabby loving friend. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new, my name is Becky and welcome to Kinda Shabby. I enjoy sharing all things DIY and decorating. And if you enjoy those things too, then stick around. If you like what you see, please subscribe, like, and comment. Now today I have so many fun projects to share with you, so we're just gonna go ahead and get started. Okay, project number one. I'm going to be giving a shabby chic update to this footstool. Hold it up here so you can see it a little better. This footstool was made by my father-in-law and then my daughter had it in her house for a little while. So now I am the proud owner. Of course, we'll be painting the base and then I'm going to be recovering this fabric in a more shabby chic fabric to match my personal style. It just lifts right off. So this is gonna make quick and easy work to update the fabric on this. So let me move all this stuff out of the way and I will be right back. All right, we are ready to get started with some paint. And looking at this, I've actually discovered several different colors. It's got some aqua on it, it has some black, it has some white, it has some hunter green. So it's been through several different color iterations in its long years of life. But I will be using the Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory because I think it matches my fabric better and I can't wait to show you the fabric either. I've also got a little bit of water here because sometimes when you put your paint in a jar and you leave it sitting out for a little bit while you're working with it, it can get a little thick. So every now and then just dip your brush bristles into the water, thin it out just a little bit and it will help that paint spread just a little bit better. So we're just going to go ahead and get some paint on this thing. I am using an angled brush because it helps me to get into those corners a little bit better. Sometimes you do have to get your brush down in there and just really wiggle it really well just to get that paint on there. Then you go back in and smooth all that out. So now that I have this area in here base coated, I'm gonna go back in with a smaller tipped brush in these scalloped areas here. That's gonna help to eliminate any excess paint spread. So it just is gonna give a cleaner finish to this area. There's also a scalloped design within the body of the footstool as well. I am going to be going in with my brush on all of these scalloped areas with that smaller brush. I like the history of knowing every single one of these colors was painted by somebody in our family and I think that still just adds to the handcrafted charm of this piece. We have our footstool drying on the drop cloth, so now we're going to recover the cushion. And this is the fabric that my daughter had on there, which is quite nice, but I will be replacing that with something that makes my shabby loving heart sing. It has birds, it has florals, it has all of these beautiful colors in there. So that's what we're going to be using to cover our cushion. Turn it over, grab a cup, our little pliers, and a screwdriver. And what we're going to do is pull up these staples. Keep your hand out of the way so if it slips you don't hurt yourself. And then after you work those up, just come back with your pliers and pull those out. And so that's what I'm going to be doing to the remainder of the cushion. Then we'll use this piece as a template to cut the perfect size for us to replace it with our beautiful floral bird fabric. Okay, I have our fabric down here all ready to go. Now I'm just going to take my electric stapler and I'm gonna do a north, south, east, west. That way, if you have to readjust your fabric, if your design um, got off kilter, it's so much easier than trying to remove a whole bunch of staples if you just start with one on each side. Okay, let me see. Oh, that looks good. 
So now I'm going to go back in and do the sides and then I'll do the corners. Because my cushion here is extra deep and extra plush, it is not going to give me that nice smooth corner that I like when I do my recovering. Eyeball it this way, take the corner, pull it down, and then just wrap that other fabric around there making a little pleat and smooth that out with your fingers as best you can. And then we're going to turn that over and staple it down. And then on this side here, same thing, I'm just going to smooth that out as best I can. Make my little pleat and staple that down. And then our last one here, we're going to pull that and you can see it smooth out. Smooth it out with our fingers as best we can. We're going to make our little pleats all up underneath here as we smooth it out. And then we turn it over and staple it down. And that is as good as we're going to get with this big thick plush thing. And now I am just going to take my scissors and go and cut off the excess. And I will save these scraps for, of course, a tassel at some point. Well, this cushioning just sits in the opening of the footstool, so I think this turned out really great. Well, now that my little footstool is all properly shabby chic up, we have just a couple of more projects to complete for this episode. We are going to be stamping just some plain lunch bags to create these cute little shabby chic containers. We're going to make some cute little coasters that are fall themed with our pumpkin and acorn shapes here. Then I have to figure out how I am going to shabby chic up these little items that Mr. Shabby and cousin Billy Finch Jr. brought back from their thrift haul. So I'm going to go ahead and clear this off and we'll get these other projects started. For this project, I am going to be using some paper lunch sacks. I just grabbed this bag from Walmart. I'm going to be using the Iron Orchid Designs stamps in the set called Crockery. I'm also using my quilting ruler, some black ink from Iron Orchid Designs, but I also like the Ranger archival ink that I get off of Amazon, and some baby wipes to clean up if we have any excess that needs to be wiped away. This stamp right here, it says Royal Curd. I think that one is really pretty. It has all of these little filigree on there. I like using my quilting ruler because it makes it so easy to align this right in the middle. Then I take my grocery sack, my little paper sack. There's that little seam down the back and I don't want to stamp on that side. I stamp on the other side. And these things are a little wavy and a little wrinkly. So you're not going to get a perfect impression on these, but it still looks really cute and really rustic when we're finished. Now I'm just going to ink up my stamp and I like to put a good amount of ink on that stamp and you can see there's a lot of excess ink around the stamp so I take my baby wipe and just wipe that away because I don't want that to inadvertently get onto the area that I will be stamping. I set my mason jar inside here to see where I needed to stamp and I see that if I put my stamp right along this crease here, it brings it low enough. I didn't do that on this one, and you can see my stamp is too high. So now I'm going to just hover right over that crease, get this where I think it looks like it's in the middle, and press it down. And we're just going to walk our fingers over it making sure to cover all of the design. You do want to have firm pressure, but not so firm that you distort your image. So now that I have walked my fingers all over 
each area of the design here, I am now going to lift straight up. And you can see, I don't have a complete impression right in here, but the bag is really wrinkly up here, and that's okay. We can leave it as it is and have it unwrinkled and pristine. We can crinkle and wrinkle our bag all up, and I'll do that with the next one. We'll do this one here that says pure cream. Has a little cow on it, really cute. And again, I'm just gonna line this up in the middle, ink up my stamp, remove the excess from around the stamp, open my bag, and we want to place that stamp right above this crease right here. Hover and get it in the center as best we can, and push down. Walk our fingers over the design and lift straight up. And that is just so super cute. I'm gonna take a mason jar and set that in there. And I'm just going to roll a cuff. This is also really cute with some battery operated flameless candles. They look really cute in there. Please do not put a real candle in there with a paper sack. We do not want to have anyone's home set afire. So that gives us our little cup. And then I just take some of this jute twine that I pick up from Hobby Lobby. And I'm just going to take that around you know, three or four times. And there we go. That is super duper cute. Now I saw this on Julie's Designs and Signs group page and I tried to find the original poster. So if you gals know who actually posted this concept on Julie's page, please put that in the comments. So now that this has dried, we're just gonna crinkle it up. And the more you crinkle, the softer this becomes. All right, here, put in there. Make a little cuff over that. And then I'm gonna follow that up with the twine just like we did for the other one. Put some cotton in there. How cute is that? That was so quick and so easy. If you go to ironorchiddesigns.com, you can find someone in your area when you enter your zip code who will sell these or you can find the retail stock as closest to you that can ship them to you. And I think that they just make such quick, cute, simple decorations. And these are just awesome in a fall vignette. And now we'll go on to start making our cute little coasters. Now for my cute little mug rug here, I used 100% cotton fabric and just some craft felt that I picked up in the crafting area at Walmart. You are going to need an outline. I did a Google Images search for a pumpkin outline and an acorn outline. You're also going to need some heat and bond. For this project, I should have used the heat and bond light that is in the purple package, but I didn't have enough of that to complete the project, so I'm going to use the ultra. I'm gonna take our felt, lay it down. We're gonna take our heat and bond to the shiny nubby side, lay that down, and then take my fabric and lay that down. And then I'll take my little pumpkin here. I'm just gonna pin all of that together and I'm just gonna cut that out. So that's what we have. We're gonna just take our pins away. So I'm gonna set the pattern aside and I'm gonna leave my pumpkin the right side up and I'm just gonna move that to the side. My iron is set at a medium heat and I'm just gonna go over that and hold that down for just a few seconds until I cover my whole design. And now we're gonna set that aside and let that cool off. We're gonna go ahead and make our acorn. And I did cut the acorn into two pieces. So you're gonna need another piece of felt, another piece of your heat and bond, 
I've got this fabric that I want to use as the base of my acorn and I'm going to pin that all together and I'm going to cut this excess of this fabric off so I can put my second fabric on there. I'm going to pin my fabric to just this top portion of my pattern for just one second. So now that I've pinned my top portion and my bottom portion, I'm going to cut the whole design out because I want my heat and bond and the base to be one piece. That is going to be so cute when I get that together. So I've got my pink base and my heat and bond and I'm going to go ahead and press that down. And go all around the edges making sure everything is stuck down. And we're going to set that off to cool and bring our pumpkin back in. We are going to peel off the paper backing. We are left with more glue. And you can see it's all shiny. And that's the glue on there. Now we're going to lay our pink felt down take our pumpkin fabric face up and now we're going to press that down. And then I just go back over the edges with the point of my iron just to make sure everything on those edges is nice and securely stuck down. Okay, that looks so cute. That's adorable. So now that our acorn has cooled, we're going to pull that paper off. So let's lay our felt down with the sticky side up. And now we're going to do our pieces of our acorn. And now we're going to press those down. And I'm going to run my iron around all of those edges just to make sure everything is nicely stuck down. Now because there is a gap between the top and the bottom, I'm going to go back in with some rickrack and hot glue that over that little seam and it's just going to make it just so adorable. And because the rickrack is flat, when I set my mug on it, it is going to tip over. What I'm going to do is go to my sewing machine and I'm just going to stitch a quarter inch all the way around my design here. I think it finishes it off and makes it look really, really cute. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch these down and we'll be right back. If I turn the ring light off, you can actually see these a little better, how I have stitched. It's kind of hard to see the stitching in this one because of the pattern. And I just took a pin that's the same color as my thread and made my little pumpkin tine marks there. It's going to go around the edges with my pinking shears just to help finish that off. I am sitting down for this one. I had considered painting them, but they're covered in all of this glitter and I just didn't think the paint was going to stick. So I'm going to decoupage them using book pages. And I had a lot of these left over from when I did my book page wreath. And I will also link that tutorial below because that was the first video that I ever uploaded to YouTube. So I hope you'll go and check that out. So I took these book pages, then I took my Cricut paper trimmer, trimmed them into half inch strips, and I'm just going to decoupage them onto these little things here. and. Then we're just going to shabby chic them all up once I get all of those book pages on there. So I'm going to get my glasses on and we're just going to go ahead and get started. I've never decoupaged on top of glitter paint before, so I'm hoping this is going to work. And if it doesn't, we'll try something else. Well, so far so good. I hope y'all are having a good week. I tell you, it's been a little rough around here. My old dog's been sick. And she's much, much better now that she's had a couple of uh, doses of her antibiotics. But if you're out there and you are a pet parent to an animal that is very senior, y'all know what I mean. Whenever they get sick, you kind of look at them sideways and go, oh goodness, is this it? You always think that that might be the end, but she's going to make a complete recovery. 
but it's been a little stressful. So I've had to feed her ice chips just to make sure she stayed hydrated. And I've had to take her wet food and mix it in with like some low sodium chicken broth just to kind of make like a nasty dog soup. So it's been, it's been an interesting week around here. I think that's going to look great. So I'm just going to keep on decoupaging this thing and then we will go ahead and get some embellishments on here. All right, friends, the Mod Podge is all dry and now it is ready for decorations. So I have an assortment of laces, some ribbons here, pearls, some jingle bells, some greenery, buttons. So I've just got a big assortment of things here and we're just going to go ahead and start decorating them. So I'm going to adjust the camera angle and bring you in closer so you can get a better look at how we are going to decorate our Christmas balls. Now this one I'm just going to keep very simple. So I've decided I'm going to use this pretty lace and I love this. It was from a collection of my mother's and I'm going to use some Sola wood flowers. I found this when I was looking through my mom's laces. Look at this. The date on that is March 29th, 1967, and the price was seven cents. Isn't that amazing? So this is something I probably won't ever use. I'll just keep in my collection of my mom's, but I thought you guys would get a kick out of seeing the five yards for seven cents and the date of 1967. I'm just going to take the lace and I'm going to spread my fingers out and wrap it around. Well, let's do three times, keeping the lace straight. Cut off the excess there. And now I'm going to go in between this here and make that the middle. And that's going to be our bow. Fluff out ribbons there. And now this excess piece, I'm going to bring it down and around. So that's going to form the middle of my bow. I'm going to put a little bit of glue here to hold that together. But before I glue it down, I want to make some tails with this. And it's easier to work with round objects if you use a bag of beans or a bag of rice or something along those lines just to hold your item steady while you're working with it. I think that looks good. Glue these tails down. And I'm going to glue that to the middle of my tails. Generous amount of glue. And we're just going to hold that until it sets. Generous amount of glue. And we're just going to hold that until it sets. And there we go. We are finished with that one. That was easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now to take care of this situation right here, unravel that little bit of glitter. It just comes right off. It's pretty easy to bend and just kept putting that around and around until it formed a hanger. And then took the flat part here and just gave it a little squeeze. And that's how I formed the hanger portion of the ornament. I thought this big trim that I showed y'all in my Hobby Lobby haul a couple of weeks ago, I thought this was just adorable. It has this string at the bottom that holds the fringe together. Then after you purchase it, you pull on that string to release the fringe. We're going to glue our fringe onto the top of our ornament here. I am loving that already. Isn't that cute? I think a jingle bell would look cute on that. I got this at Walmart last year and I kept going back trying to find more. I never found more of it. Pull one of those off. So if I glue that like that, and then we can glue our bell just like that. I think that is super duper cute. Use my Bondo spreader to hold that in and put glue all up underneath there. 
This little spreader saves my fingers so many times. Load up the middle here with a generous amount of glue and hold that in till it sets. I think I'm going to add another little sprig of greenery right there. And I'll add another little bit right there too. There we go. We've got our little fringe around here, our little jingle bell, and our greenery. Just one more to go. I'm going to start at the top of this one with this cute trim, and I'm going to glue it with the scalloped edge facing up. And y'all know it is tassel time. Let me see how long I want my tassel to fall. So I'm going to lay this out here. Let's see where the beginning of this thing is. Let's put pink ribbon and some of this white ribbon in there. And now let me see if I like that better. So now that I'm satisfied with the way that looks, I'm going to go ahead and tie it in the middle. And now tie that onto my Christmas ball. I'm going to go back and glue this little knot down. And I love these. I think they turned out so good. So I think I did a good job with the challenge from Billy Finch Jr. Well gals, that is it for this thrift flip. I think I did a pretty good job with these. You'll have to let me know in the comments if you think so too. Now all I need to do is get some close-up beauty shots and we are done for this episode.
Thank you so much for spending a bit of your time here with me today. I truly appreciate you. And I also appreciate the beautiful comments from you sweet ladies. Come back next week for more kind of shabby, but always chic, crafty inspirations. And until next week, my friends, be blessed. <music>